Superheroes have a lot to deal with, between common street thugs committing small crimes and people like Thanos coming in trying to end all life everywhere. Life for them can be kinda complicated. And to make things worse, here comes the whole issue of film rights, which is a very real world issue that causes major problems for our favorite heroes fictional worlds. And right now it looks like Spider-Man may soon be saying bye bye to the MCU, as Disney and Sony are having some major problems striking a deal to keep the webhead around. While the door isn't completely closed, at least as of the recording of this video, Spidey no longer being available to Marvel Studios kind of messes with a few possibilities that they may have been building towards. Let's take a look at the impossible to do storylines, shall we? So if Sony and Disney cannot reach a deal over the rights regarding everyone's favorite friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, what does that really mean? Well, on the macro scale, it would basically mean that Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, and all connected characters and properties would no longer be able to appear within the Marvel Cinematic Universe or really any of its offshoots. So no Aunt May solo film? Say it ain't so! Yep, no Spider-Man in the next Avengers film either, or Ultimates, or Young Avengers, or whatever we've got coming next. Of course, it also means that there are a few storylines that were both in the works within the MCU and possibly on the horizon that could not happen without the webhead. The biggest hanging thread currently is the whole Spider-Man is the next Iron Man thing. Since his introduction in the MCU, it was pretty clear that Marvel was setting up Peter Parker as the successor to Tony Stark, meant to take over as the character at the forefront of the entire franchise. And with Tony taking his well-earned rest after the end of Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man Far From Home put all of the pieces in place, finally letting Parker stand tall on his own, ready to take his proper place as a member of the new Marvel Trinity. But whoops! Without the film rights to Spider-Man, that isn't going to happen anymore. Sure, Sony could and probably are going to continue the films, building upon Far From Home and Homecoming, possibly towards the Sinister Six showdown that they've been wanting to do for years at this point. Of course, it'll have to be a Sinister Six that isn't singularly motivated by something Tony Stark did at some point, which would probably be a bit tough for them to do since, you know, that's so far been the go to motivator for them in this current version of the Spider-Man franchise. And that also means that Parker himself also would not be able to use Stark or any of his experiences with Stark as motivation or anything like that. In fact, it would largely gut a major side of Parker's character. Sure, he was moving past Stark's passing by the end of Far From Home, but his time spent with his superhero mentor was still a pretty major part of his story. So not being able to build upon that any further could be pretty rough. A minor storyline that is also completely dependent upon Spider-Man being part of the MCU is the whole Aunt May Happy Hogan romantic fling situation. While Far From Home sort of played up Happy and May's relationship as a bit of a joke and left things kind of up in the air, there was definitely room for possible growth there. Come on, you can't tell us you didn't kind of want to see Happy serve as a sort of stepfather figure for Parker. Their relationship dynamic would have made for some pretty hilarious moments. Now, outside of the already established storylines, there are a few things that Spidey leaving the MCU could make a lot more difficult, and even downright impossible. There has been some talk of there being a Young Avengers film coming to the MCU, with many speculating that Spider-Man, being a bit on the younger side himself, could serve as the team's leader, or at the very least as a mentor or something to the group of fledgling heroes. Well, now that's definitely a no-go, at least as long as Sony and Disney can't reach a deal. Another Another big team up that fans have been wanting to see come to fruition on the silver screen for years is Spider-Man hanging out with the Fantastic Four, which up until Sony and Disney having contractual disputes at this point seemed like more of a question of when than if. See, in the comics, Spider-Man has, on a few different occasions, attempted to join the first Marvel family, notably during his early days of superheroing, including during issue number one of The Amazing Spider-Man from 1963, where he first met the team, hoping to join them because he thought that being a member of the team would be a good way to earn money. Not realizing, of course, that the Fantastic Four was a non-profit team, and no one made money from heroing like that. Although, on a few occasions actually, Parker did manage to join the team, most notably during the Future Foundation arc, where, 
After the passing of the Human Torch, Spider-Man joined up with the Future Foundation, a sort of expanded version of the Fantastic Four, since, you know, their name kind of lends itself to a definitive number of members. How cool would it be to see the Future Foundation in the MCU? Maybe that'll be the next big team-up film. Well, if things go the way they're looking with Sony and Disney, it'll be a Spider-Man-less Future Foundation, which is a pretty serious bummer. That black and white spider suit would look absolutely incredible on the big screen. But there is one thing that Sony and Disney splitting ways could lead to that is sort of positive, and that is Spider-Man getting to interact with Tom Hardy's Venom. There was already rumors going around that Sony wanted Tom Holland's Spider-Man to pop up in a future Venomverse film, possibly Venom 2, but his affiliation with the MCU made that seem a lot less likely. Outside of the MCU, though, there really isn't anything stopping these iconic frenemies from crossing paths. Whether or not that is worth losing the stories that Spider-Man being a part of the MCU could bring, we'll leave up to you. If there is to be no more Spider-Man in the MCU, which of these storylines is the one that you are most sad to see get cut off? Were there any we missed? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're down there, why not hit that subscribe button for more great Screen Rant content in your feed each and every day. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you at the movies.